right at sunrise, right below the Dalles Dam. I know what I'm talking about. Work while we got a bass. That's pretty good. That is a great fish you got there. And you know, it's great to see it in the clear water, and the light is just perfect. For you. Oh, that's a dandy. Finally, one bite. I mean, we're going to have half an hour. Finally, got one. Bite. Yeah, well, that was worth it, Renee. That is, that's a good fish. And he did, man. He smacked that three times. That was exciting to see it come up and just do that. The back hook too. <laughs> oh, he's not three pounds. Two and a half, but a nice fish. Very nice fish. Yeah. Very healthy. Look at Heck it, man. Yeah, he's nice, just good, good deep. Fish. Yeah. Very fine. Good. Fine. Go back, Mr. Fish. Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, that fish was a result of working the topwater plugs just off the edge of these islands that are just outside of the marina here at the Dalles. Lots of great water. We have just about zero current this morning. And the river is down. You can probably see on the shoreline the color on the rocks. It's uh, dropped significantly. But Renault, he found one. I think we'll find another fish or two. Okay. <laughs> just like you Dave said, just, we, we just saw a good smallmouth chasing bait. Dave threw over there. The thing jumped completely out of there and came down on top of his top water. He is working him in now. He's a good fish too. Seems like. Staying down now. <laughs> that was, you just said, get that guy. That was great, Dave. <laughs> Cast right to the ring. Yeah. There he is. That's a good one. I about like the one Nice you got. fish. Good job, man. Maybe, uh... Oh, he's bigger than the one I caught. That's a good three plus. Now that is fun. <laughs> you make it look easy. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah. That's a way to break in this new rod. <laughs> Why, this sure. You hooked him right stick. in the top of the head, didn't you? Yeah. Man, he just dove on it. I happened to get the hook coming now. Well done. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That is a good one. Small uh, Renel, that good is work. so much fun. Very good, man. Thank you very <laughs> much. Welcome. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bass. There he goes. Ah good vibe, Mr. That's Small what we're now. after. Woohoo! <laughs> that was really fun. Well, Renel was just drifting that top water plug right along the edge of those rocks and that's where the fish couldn't resist looks like it might be another nice fish pretty nice when you know the three we've caught have been decent fish we haven't caught this one Like yours, Dave. I caught this one in the mouth. <laughs> hey, I'll stick him in the top of the head. Like I'll you. take him any way I can <laughs> get him. <laughs> uh, now, what's the name of that plug? What do you call that, that one? That is a Zara Spook. Oh, it is a Spook. Okay. Yeah, it's just a small saltwater saltwater version. Yeah. So uh, works pretty good sometimes. Working today.
fall run salmon are pouring into the region and anglers are shifting their focus to areas like Priest Rapids, Bernita, and White Bluffs. That doesn't mean they are putting away the super baits. These baits are very effective for fall run fish and they have also added the Yakima bait, Maglip flatfish, and the Hognose flatfish to their arsenal. You can find all these great baits at Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee and you can find even more great gear by visiting HookedOnToys.com. Your town Ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built for Tough Truck event. Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built for tough. Like the Ford F-150 with a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine. The power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. The goal of Battery Systems is to provide the best products combined with the most efficient service at competitive prices. I've found their people live up to this, so don't buy anything without talking to them. You should make their batteries and accessories your choice to power your vehicles and boats. This is Dave Graybill, and I choose Battery Systems to keep me running on shore and on the water. To find a Battery Systems product expert in a location near you, log on to BatterySystems.net. When you're fishing in Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, even Rufus Woods, the place to stay is at Cooley Playland in Electric City. They have camping and RV hookups right on the water. There's a launch with fuel and one of the best tackle shops in the area. You can get your state and tribal fishing licenses right there. Cooley Playland has been the friendly place to stay for fishermen for decades, and if you haven't camped there yet, you'll learn why. Call for reservations at 509-633-2657. Be sure to visit their website at cooleyplayland.com. Well, we switched to uh, drop shot rigs. I got picked immediately, and then Renault hooked up right here, right in this narrow little channel. I think these are going to work. Not a bad little fish. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Once we got up into this area, yeah. All of a sudden, we went from zero to six or seven fish already now. The drop shot pays off again. Oh, yeah. There he is. Right along these steep rock banks. Good little fish. It's yeah. all right. Oh yeah. Now is that a tube? Yep. And I'm getting ready to put, give you one of those tubes because they, they they really work well for us. Yeah. It's this small profile tube that drop shots real well. Well, we've been so busy fishing out here today, I've barely introduced uh, Renault. Renault Pelletier. He's been the captain, the skipper, the lead <laughs> angler today. And Renault, you've been a tournament bass fisherman for how long? Um... Forty years. Forty years. Forty years. That's amazing, I'll yeah. tell you. And uh, this guy knows what he's doing. In fact, on um, even he's fished all over Oregon. We've talked a lot of places. He's fished in Washington. He fished a tournament in Arkansas that he qualified for last year. And uh, we're down here below the Dalles today. And I was amazed because you know, you're just cruising along shorelines and they all look about the same to me. 
and he pulled up on a couple of pinnacles that I don't know how in the world he ever found them, but that's just a testament to the amount of time he spent on the water. And this, it, he mentioned to me, this is one of his favorite stretches of river anywhere. And uh, what, what makes, what's the basic appeal? Well, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of different uh, rock formations, types of rock formations. There's basalt, there's uh, chunk rock, uh, there's submerged humps like you mentioned. There's good weed lines. There's some good spawning areas, some gravel areas back in the uh, areas that are uh, backwater, kind of out of the current. So there's just a good variety, a lot of good, a lot of good habitat for smallmouth. And obviously, very good numbers. Uh, today, there's been very little current. Uh, it's been very clear and calm, kind of tough conditions, but we've still. We started off the morning catching some pretty sizable two to three and a half pound smallmouth. And that was all on top water, which was a lot of fun. And then we've been catching them on uh, drop shot rigs. What's the biggest smallmouth you've taken from this stretch of river here? Well, my personal best is, uh, is 515. I always call it six pounder, so. Oh, yeah. And there, there are a number of six pound fish caught down here every year, but uh -huh. not a lot. Yeah. But five pounders are fairly common in the spring. Uh, the average size would, most of the year round, would be two and a half to four pounds. Now, if, you know, if I was going to plan a trip from my area to come down here in the spring, <coughs> when would you recommend I start planning a trip to come down and fish the Columbia in the Gorge? Well, I would, I would say the second week in May through the end of May, the last three weeks of May, are usually the best uh, best time. That's, that's, you're, you're pretty much assured to be finding some spawning fish. They'll be up very shallow and very aggressive. And uh, you, you're always taking a risk in the gorge with the wind. And then, it, you know, you just sometimes you just can't hardly get out because it's so windy. But um, that's the best time. You can catch them on crankbaits, uh, uh, rattle baits and tubes and jigs and split it's about anything you want to use in two to eight feet of water and you can catch a lot of good smallmouth. Top to bottom this area in the gorge is just loaded with great places to find smallmouth. Yeah it, it sure is Dave it's uh, it's it's really we're, we're very fortunate over here on the west side of the state to have such good water and it's so accessible a lot of boat ramps all the way from Portland to the Tri-Cities, and uh, all of it's really good smallmouth water. The, the only problem we have is the wind, <laughs> which that's we have right. too much of. <laughs> and that, it's famous for that. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so bring your windsurfing board yeah, if you come yeah, down here, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> well, we've sure had a great morning, and uh, we just took a little break here, had a sandwich, and now we're going to work our way back up the river, back up toward the Dalles, and, and boy, Renault, thank you so much. This has been a real treat today. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I sure have, Dave. Hope we can get them good this afternoon, too. This is pretty neat against this rock wall here. The yeah, two-tone rock. And, fish. and look at that. Drop shot all day. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, we've had picked up a few through here, but they've all been small. That's a yeah, beaut. Yeah, kind look of at skinny. that. One of our skinniest ones, see? Yeah, yeah. Not much of a belly on him, is it? He needs to get after those shad. <laughs> It's a dream come true. For E-Tech engine sales and service and repair of all boats and motors, call Lyle's Boats and Motors in Cashmere. 663-5191. Honey, you are not going to believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar? Mmm.
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me get a camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. <laughs> my parents are going to fly. Yeah, they're going to be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Drink it to believe it. Are you getting this, honey? It's going viral. Hi, I'm Dave Graybill, the fish and magician, and I'm sitting in front of the Lake Pateras Inn. Lake Pateras Inn is one of the most convenient places you can stay if you like to fish for salmon or steelhead on the upper Columbia River. You can moor your boat at the dock, or there are two ramps within yards. They have outdoor power so you can charge your electric motor. Rooms are clean and comfortable and very affordable. Everything you need is right here at the Lake Pateras Inn. All right, Renault starts our morning off. Again, fish in top water, these pop R's. And there's a pretty decent fish, all right. That's okay. This top water is so much fun to see him come up and whack those. Yeah, that's okay, Renault. Nice, healthy fish, isn't he? He is. That's what we're looking for, more of those. Surprising how many of these fish, when they hit these top water, get hooked. Not so much in their mouth, but other areas, because they just come up and dive on them and attack them, and sometimes they get them in a different area. Nice. Good job. Woohoo! This morning we started uh, a little different area. We are still in the Columbia River Gorge, of course, but we're fishing out of the area called Celilo Park. And we are just below the railroad bridge, which is just below the bridge at Biggs. Fishing the shoreline along the riprap banks where the railroad tracks go. And this has been a great spot for Renault in the past, and it's already produced a couple of fish this morning. Boy, that one just boiled on that. Not far from the boat. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a pretty good one. That's a good one. I like it. I have no idea where he came from, but I'm glad he, he did. He showed up, yeah. Look at pretty. that. Very nice. We're going to talk about rigging a drop shot rig for smallmouth. We have a small swivel, a uh, Gamagatsu drop shot hook, size one, a 3 16 ounce sinker with a special swivel in the top of it, which I'll explain in a minute, and we're going to use a, a small green tube. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off a piece of about 18 inches of six pound mono, that's the size line I'm using, and tie the swivel into one end of that. Everybody has their own preferred knots. I think the Palomar knot is the most is the easiest to tie and the and the strongest knot for most people. So that's what I always use for almost everything I fish a Palomar knot. And I'm not going to go into the details of tying that. You can most everybody knows how or you can find out online. I'm going to tie that there, and I'm going to tie it the other end of the swivel to my main line with another Palomar knot. I know the, the Polymar has been recommended as a good knot for the, the newer monofilament lines. Yeah, and, and it's also a good knot, yeah, for fluorocarbon lines. 
Yes. Now I cut the I'm cutting the tag ends off of these two knots. We don't want a lot of extra mono fluoro floating around. Okay, so now we've got the swivel and about 18 inches of leader below it. And the swivel is important for drop shot fishing because the bait tend to, the, you, you drag the sinker along the bottom quite a lot and it twists a lot. And even though this sinker has a swivel in it, you will twist your line horribly. And twisted line on a spinning reel is just a pain in the neck because you'll end up with a lot of trouble with your with the loops and your around your spool. So the next thing you do is tie on the hook. And it's important on drop shot rigging, when you tie the hook on, you take the line and you want, if, and I'm going to use another Palomar knot, you want the line to go in on the, the point side of the hook through the eye of the hook like so. Then comes back through the other way. And then you're going to move that hook up to within, you know, four or five inches of the swivel and tie it and tie the Palomar knot at that point. Now that the knot is tied and the, the hook is hanging below the swivel, you want to take your remaining piece of the leader and stick it back through the front side of the hook the way you originally put your line through it to tie the knot. Put it back through like that and pull it all the way through like that and then just kind of pull your line both parts of the line out and it holds the hook standing off the line like so. You want that to hook to stand off the line at 90 degrees so that when the bait is being fished it's fishing directly away from the directly off the line and not hanging down and wrapping around the, the bottom of the line. You'll see what I'm saying here when I put the weight on. So we, we're hooking a tube right through the nose just like that hook points exposed. If you were using a worm, you'd hook it the same way at the very tip of the worm. And we take the weight, slide the weight through the, put it through the eye of this little swivel on the end of the drop shot, and then pull it through to the desired length you want your leader to be between the bait and the weight. And I like fairly short. It's eight to ten inches max for smallmouth in the Columbia. And it varies with different different lakes, but that works good for me. Then you pull, there's a little cinching uh, closure on that swivel. You pull your line into that cinching mechanism and it holds the weight. The idea of that is, that type of swivel is that when you get the weight hung up, if you pull hard, it will pull the line free and you won't lose your whole rig. And then I just cut off the remaining part of the of the line and you have your rig made up just like that. That's the drop shot rig. That's great. And it proven to be highly effective out here. They it like it to is that. very effective. Yeah. Alright, when we started this morning early, we started with two different types of topwater baits. This is a, a chugger type bait. It's a uh, uh, Rico. This is a large model Rico chugger bait. It's got a hollowed out face. Uh, it, as you, you pop it along, it warbles and pops and spits, and it, it's about the same color and size of the American Shad fry that are now migrating down the Columbia back to the ocean. The other bait we were using is a Zara Spook, a Super Spook. This is a, a walking type bait. It, walks across the surface in a snake-like pattern. This is big. It's way bigger than the bait in, that, we're, that the fish are feeding on right now. But it's a real uh, attractor kind of topwater bait that smallmouth can't resist a lot of times. No matter what they're feeding on, this big bait will, will attract them and you'll catch them. And it's, it's a very popular bait, the Zara Super Spook. That's what we started out with. We caught a few fish on those. And then we started throwing these rattle baits. This is an LV100 
a Lucky Craft bait. There are many, many types of rattle baits. This was a small kind of, this is an American shad color uh, that resembles these shad that are in the river right now. It's a small one. We tend to catch more fish on the smaller size baits this time of year. Uh, we haven't done too well on this yet today, but it's a, it's a rattle bait. It, it, it makes a lot of noise in the water. It has a high vibration, and it, it, it's, it's mainly used in shallow water less than five feet deep. And then we use the drop shot baits that we talked about earlier, and we also have just fished a straight a regular tube with a, with a head that mounts in, goes inside the tube. Another, this is a watermelon color tube with a head inside of about a 3 16 weight, exposed hook. That's also been effective for us today. So those are our main baits for today. Oh, and well, we did use also some deep diving cranks. Uh, this is a Lucky Craft uh, Rick Klun. I'm not sure exactly what this is. This is, I think, uh, uh, 2.5 DL. There's so many different designations for Lucky yeah. Craft crankbaits, it's hard to remember the exact model. But this one dives to about 10 feet. And it's an American shad color, too, which which matches the shad forage that are in the river right now. So it's, it's been an effective bait for us. That's a great selection. Yep. For fish and smallmouth here. It sure it seems to work. In the Columbia River Gorge in the fall. Don't make plans to store your boat for the off season until you've checked out the super package from Bob File Boats and Motors. With this package, you just drop your boat off for winterizing and they take it from there. When you pick it up in the spring, it'll be ready to go for the next season. There are too many features in the super package to list here, so get the details by calling Bob File Boats and Motors at 509 884 3558. Gaboon Productions LLC is a full-service video production company right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Gaboon is a term coined by my grandfather, commercial fishing in Alaska. It's when a bunch of fish hit your net all at the same time. We capture life as you see it. From filming those special moments to catching something big, Gaboon Productions LLC can record it, edit it, and save it for you forever. We do weddings, theater productions, concerts, reunions, commercials, and more. Go to GaboonProductions.com on the web, check us out on Facebook, and on YouTube. Gaboon Productions LLC, the little video company capturing your big moments. No one is happy about having to repair a vehicle after an accident. However, I was very happy when I chose First Choice Collision Center when I needed this service. I can't say enough about how they treated me. Fast and friendly just doesn't say enough. They have amazing technology to make a damaged vehicle look like new. At First Choice Collision Center, you can expect modern service with old-fashioned values. That was my experience, and I'm sure it will be yours, too. Now, I'm the cameraman, and Dave is catching the fish. <laughs> He's got one on a drop shot here that's giving him a real hard time. Yeah. And it's a nice, good good fish, two pounds. Fish Not a bad one at all. Oh, don't flash on the camera there, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's a good job, exactly. Dave. That uh, rig that you just showed us how to set up yeah. is doing the job. Yeah, it sure did. That's a good one. That's a good two and a quarter, two and a half pounder. Nice yeah. fish, Dave. Good work. Reno, thank you. You're you welcome. You set me up and put him right, put me right on him. Well, it's been a fun day. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Well, I hear that drag going, Reno. Oh gee, this might be the biggest fish of the trip. So yeah. He doesn't want to come off the bottom, does he? Love it, I love it. <laughs> there. Oh. oh yeah. Oh, good three 
plus four pounds, maybe. Oh, look at that. Look at that beauty. Yeah. Oh, he's hefty. Oh, my that's, goodness. Yeah, that's about four. That's a good small amount. Good one for anywhere in this part of the river. Good job. Right on a two. Yeah, just straight on a two. That's great. Uh, so that one was kind of deep, huh? Yeah, he was probably 15, 20 feet. Wow. Right at the base of that little bluff there. Boy, for some reason, this spot has been the honey hole for us today. Every fish we've got out of here has been a real eye popper. Oh, look at that. Dandy fish. You have swallowed that tube. That's on a watermelon tube. Same color as our drop shot rigs. That's the color here today that's doing the job.